But yeah, I intend, I intend to quit at 60. I'm going to write novels and write cinema literature and stuff like that. You have a plan. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah, yeah, very no. serious about it. Most people find it hard to believe that Tarantino is actually going to stop making movies. You've said that you might retire after your 10th. Is that, are you serious about that? What is this nonsense about you're only going to make one more movie? But it appears to be true. He's currently working on his 10th and final feature, The Movie Critic, and after that he's done directing. But it's not because he doesn't have more stories he wants to tell, he just doesn't trust himself to be the one at the helm any longer. Stating, I don't want to become this old man who's out of touch, when already I'm feeling a bit like an old man out of touch, when it comes to the current movies that are out right now. Contrast that with Martin Scorsese, who at 80 years old, feels the exact opposite. He now reflects upon Kurosawa's Lifetime Achievement Award speech, in which he suggested at 83, he's only now beginning to see the possibility of what cinema could be. At the time I said, what does he mean? Now I know what he means. I want to tell stories, and there's no more time. So Scorsese is looking to maximise the years he has left, whereas Tarantino is already looking back on his legacy as a body of work he doesn't want to undermine. They're polar opposite ways of viewing the role of an artist. Is your responsibility to yourself and your audience to keep creating, or to know when to stop? Let's investigate both perspectives and see how each holds up to scrutiny. I feel like uh, um, filmmaking, you know, directors are like boxers. They have their time. At a certain point, a boxer loses it. Here Quentin compares directors to boxers, which on the face of it is true. For almost any high achiever, whether they realise they're in it or not, they'll have a peak moment of their career, when they're at their best. But while athletes fall behind because of the unavoidable drawbacks of father time, artists are usually not restricted by the same physical deficiencies. In theory their work could get better and better, as they're expanding their understanding of the craft whereas a boxer will eventually come up against someone younger, faster and stronger, who will knock them out. But movies aren't a zero-sum game. Filmmakers can, and do, coexist together at the same time. It's not like there can only be one champion of Hollywood. So is Tarantino trying to preserve himself from the humiliation of failure, or is he doing the audience a favour, by stepping back? He stated, most directors have horrible last movies, and ending your career on a decent movie is rare, but to end it with a good movie is kind of phenomenal. This suggests that Quentin is trying to micromanage his own reputation. He's preempting what people could say or think about him if he screws up. This is because, as a huge cinephile, he's seen it happen to so many great directors before that even if they don't personally realise it, at a certain point their work becomes out of touch or less compelling. They said what they needed to say, and are now just treading water. For instance, Francis Ford Coppola was a stunning director in the 1970s, giving us The Godfather Part 1 and 2, as well as Apocalypse Now. But since then, his other movies have never really hit the same way. Spielberg has had so many cinematic triumphs, both commercially and creatively, but since the mid noughties his work has had less cultural impact than before. And in the case of Hitchcock, his last five movies were nowhere near the feature films that preceded it. Think of the name value of classics like Vertigo, North by Northwest, Psycho, The Birds, compared to his last movies, Torn Curtain, Kaleidoscope, Topaz, Frenzy and Family Plot. Because I know film history, and from here on end, directors do not get better. So is what Tarantino is claiming just an observational reality? Are we all just in denial of a clear and obvious issue, as we see aging directors' movies becoming longer and more self-indulgent? Well, not that awards tell the full story, but the average age a director wins an Oscar is 47 which is nowhere close to the average age an athlete would peak, in their 20s or early 30s, so to some degree filmmaking is clearly an older person's game. The oldest director to be nominated for an Oscar was John Huston at 79, and the oldest director to win was Clint Eastwood at 74. But it is quite undeniable that at least part of what Tarantino is saying is true, as if we look at our favourite movies by our favourite directors, 
they tend not to be the last ones. There's a multitude of reasons for this. For instance, the mindset of someone pushing to break into Hollywood impacts how they manage risk. They might be more bold and daring as they're trying to find new ways to stand out. Then once they're in, there could be a qualitative leveling up due to the talented people around them, the resources available, as well as a push to cement their own legacy. But then a natural decline takes place, as this becomes the status quo. The hunger subtly drifts away. It's now just another movie, rather than the story you care so much about or your breakthrough project. Echoing what Marvin Hagler said about boxing, it's tough to get out of bed to do road work at 5am when you've been sleeping in silk pyjamas. You could also frame Tarantino's position as somewhat selfless. That by stepping back he's leaving a gap on the slate for another auteur director to get their shot. As over the past couple of decades, Hollywood has largely neglected building up star directors who can sell a movie to the mainstream on their name alone, with the exception of Christopher Nolan. Quentin believes that just as great movies shouldn't have weak scenes, great filmographies shouldn't have weak movies. I've made a similar argument before in my video about when a TV show should end, that if we view a show as a work of art, then stopping at the right time is critically important, as it preserves the quality of the piece. Just like how we appreciate the Mona Lisa for what's in the frame. But if Da Vinci had continued on a broader canvas, with different styles thrown in, then over time the Mona Lisa section would be diminished, as now the full image is more cluttered and scattershot, rather than a honed and crafted piece of perfection. But that's when all the work is part of the same story, whereas movies are standalone unique pieces of art. And this is where I just can't agree with Tarantino as he's exclusively looking at it through a cinephile's lens. Whereas most of the audience aren't film nerds, they simply watch the movie and appreciate it for what it is. For them, the movie simply exists or it doesn't. The narrative around the director who made it doesn't matter to them, but the characters, shots, scenes and story could stick with them forever. Be right. I said, but it's going to be frame left at this point because we have no time. <laughs> <laughs> You get one life with a finite amount of time, and if your passion is making movies and that's what you'll be remembered for, then you're playing with house money. You mostly only risk adding to your legacy rather than detracting from it, as yes, you could make an absolute bomb that might make people question your dwindling talent, but you might also make something that truly matters to you. Or the movie may not be appreciated at first, but still resonate with viewers as they get older. As like any piece of art, movies don't have to find immediate critical or commercial success to stand the test of time. And does making a stinker really even impact the legacy of a director? Will anyone honestly think Jaws, Jurassic Park, Indiana Jones or E.T. are worse movies because they didn't find The Post or Ready Player One as engaging? No. The movie is the movie. Sometimes directors make a dud, and that only serves as motivation and inspiration for their next hit. This is the whole fun of the creative process. When you make anything, even if you think it's great, you risk the audience not seeing it the same way. Some directors only make one good movie, and then never find notable success again. But we still appreciate and remember that piece of work for what it is. Not to mention how rare it even is to become a world-famous director, as most film and TV directors can't simply retire, as they're not privileged household names and have to keep working. But that doesn't diminish the quality of their best work, just because their next project didn't turn out quite as well as they hoped. It seems that the type of legacy Tarantino is focused on is so that other film nerds like me can do a Tarantino marathon without having to skip certain movies. But some people may say that Tarantino has already produced some self-indulgent films they don't like, as movies are so subjective that you're never going to please everyone. So if that's already the case, who exactly is Tarantino trying to preserve his reputation for? Just his hardcore fans? The general audience? Himself? Now of course retirement never requires a justification, but normally people would say they want to spend more time with family, or have changed their concentration on what really matters. But it's his reasoning that stands out here, as it's simultaneously ageist, self-protective and self-restrained. 
As for artists in particular, we tend to assume that this is all that matters to them. And if they have a canvas to keep working on and an audience to serve, then they should keep going, in the off chance they create another masterpiece. Now, I want to die directing, but I've take, I, I took my hi hiatus already, because I figured I can still be directing when I'm 80. Most movie directors never want to stop. Kubrick famously died just after he finished editing Eyes Wide Shut. Spielberg and Eastwood are all pushing for as long as they can personally go. Even Francis Ford Coppola is still taking chances, self-funding his own $100 million movie from the money he's made from his winery. Everyone wants just one more taste of glory, whereas Quentin is happy to call it a day after 10. His friend, director Paul Thomas Anderson, commented, I don't know how he could say that or how he could take himself seriously when he says that. This is what I want to do as long as I'm able to do it. Echoing Scorsese's feeling that he too is only beginning to understand what cinema could be, Ridley Scott stated, I was always amused people retire at 60. At 60 you know everything. I'm way past my 60s and I'm chugging along doing the best work I've done in my life. Just think of the movies we would have missed out on if Scorsese had quit after his first 10 features in 1978. Or if he retired at 60, like Quentin. Or right now, if Christopher Nolan had stopped after Dunkirk and thought, you know, 10 movies is a nice round number. I don't want to risk undermining my Dark Knight trilogy. Would we all be better off never seeing Tenet or Oppenheimer? Or by continuing, is he only really risking adding to his legacy rather than detracting from it? Because from my point of view, movies are standalone pieces of art. The narrative or legacy any director leaves behind is out of their control. Their only real duty is to deliver the best work they can for as long as they personally wish. If Tarantino doesn't want to direct anymore, as he worries he's losing his mojo, then he's right to walk away. But when it comes to filmographies, I personally don't think the quality over quantity argument holds up. Because history doesn't remember the number of bad movies you avoided accidentally making, but how many great movies you left behind. But what do you think? Should movie directors leave you wanting more, or wait for the audience to tell them they've simply had enough? Well, if you've made it this far, firstly, thank you for watching. But if you could now give the video a like, possibly even leave a comment and click on that subscribe button, it will encourage that mysterious algorithm to do its thing. And if you want to support the channel personally, you can check out my Patreon.